Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com. And in this week's ukulele lesson, Stephen's gonna be teaching you how to play March of the Toreadors, which translates to bullfighters. Now, this is actually the second song that we've done from the opera Carmen. The first was this one. So that aria is called Habanera, and I think it's arguably the most famous piece from the opera Carmen. Now that was just a little teaser snippet, so if you want to watch the full performance and learn how to play it, you can do so by clicking this link right here. I'll also link it in the description box below. But let's talk about this tune, the Bullfighter Song. Now I got a chance to play through it yesterday afternoon, and I gotta say that it's gonna be perfect for this seasoned intermediate player. It's just a really fun finger style piece to play for that level. It's going to be a good challenge for that level. Now let's talk a little bit about how the lesson's going to work. So in this video, Steven's going to be teaching you the first half of the tune. And if you want to learn the second half, he's going to be teaching that in the part two lesson, which will be available at this link. Or you can go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for the tune, and also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off to follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this tune, and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson on the famous opera piece March of the Toreadors from the Opera Carmen by Georges Bizet. Now I wouldn't call myself a particular opera fan uh, but I certainly know this piece and it's a super cool piece of music and it's really fun to play on ukulele as well. I think for me what makes it so enjoyable to play is that kind of March feel that it has, that strong regular rhythm. It's important to note here that we're in 2-4 time so we have two beats to the bar and the quarter note gets the beat. So this means that we're accentuating beat one while beat two is just a little bit weaker. Um, so we get this really cool kind of marching rhythm of one, two, and one, two, one, a two, a one, two, one, two, a one, two, one, two, a one. Okay, so although we are putting that accent on beat one, it's also important to note that it's not a massive difference. You know, we're not almost ripping the strings off on beat one and then gently blown on them a beat two, it's not that much of a difference. We shouldn't be overly conscious of that beat one accent. It's subtle, it's just about the feel that this time signature gives us, okay? So don't be overly conscious of that when you're playing it, don't overthink it, um, just be mindful of it um, in terms of the feel of your performance. So with this being a march, we want a fairly brisk tempo, but not too fast. I've gone for about 100 BPM with this arrangement, and you could go up to 110, maybe 115, but I wouldn't go any faster than that. So the final thing to note here is just that we are in low G. Um, it's not particularly dependent on low G, this arrangement. There are a few bass notes here and there, which is why we're using the low G. But if you were to play this high G, you'd probably just about get away with it. You would miss a couple of those bass notes. So if you have access to low G, certainly do use it. Okay. So usually in these lessons, we would look at maybe two bars together before playing them through slowly. Um, but I think because this one's in two four time and there's not a huge amount going on in each measure, we'll probably look at four bars together uh, before putting them all together and playing them through slowly. Okay, so if you're ready for this, grab yourself one of these things and let's get into it. Okay, so if we start with this short A section, this intro that leads us into the main piece, it should sound something like this. Okay, so as you can see there, pretty simple. And um, we're literally just doing the same thing um, again and again in that intro. And that one thing we're doing is basically this F chord, which isn't even a whole F chord because we don't need the G string in this. It's just the C string open, the E string at the first, and the A string open. Three strings together. I'd probably play them with your three fingers that index the middle and the ring. And just pick those three strings together on B1. And then basically just do that like 
eight times because that's the first four measures. We're just playing on, on the beat. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's the whole intro. Okay, so the only thing I'm doing there just to add something to this is rather than just playing them and letting them ring, as you can hear, I'm kind of muting them. between each beat. Okay, so the way to do that is just to play the three strings together. And then there's two ways of doing it. You can either just the picking fingers, put them back onto the three strings just after you've picked them, and that'll just mute them. Okay, the alternative is using one of these three fingers here. Obviously we're only using the first finger for fretting. These ones are all doing nothing, they're bored, so let's give them a job. I tend to use the third finger and just Just lay it across the strings and that'll mute them. Um, and either technique works well. I tend to do both for some reason, just to make sure. And it just gives that little kind of staccato sound that you hear on the original when you listen to the orchestral kind of piece of this. Um, it does have that kind of short staccato sound there leading in okay so those four measures together and for the intro let's have a go at playing those through together now one two So onto the B section now, this A melody section. Um, these first four measures of this section, measures three, four, five, and six, should sound like this. Okay, so really cool, straight into that sort of well-known, iconic melody. We all know that one. Um, so let's have a look at what we're doing with that. So we were on this F chord, in the intro, we're keeping that finger on as we go into this melody A section, and all we're gonna do is turn the F chord into an F5 chord by just adding the A string at the third with the third finger. And again, we're just picking those three strings together, same as in the intro, the open C, E at the first, A at the third. So beat one, we pick that. And then on beat two, we'll keep that held, and we'll add the pinky on to the A string at the fifth, and just play those same three strings again. That's on beat two. And then what we're gonna do here, so the rhythm we're playing for this measure is one, two, ah. So we let beat two ring for most of that beat, and then we're just gonna pick that last 16th note before going into the next beat one of the next measure, okay? So once we've played beat two, we'll let it ring for most of that beat, like I say, and then that last 16th note, we'll take that pinky off, and just pick the single note of A string at the third. That's why we keep that third finger on the whole time. When we put the pinky on, leave the third on, because when the pinky comes off, it's ready to go just to pick that single note. Okay, and then into beat one of measure four, we're just back to that F chord from the intro. So just the first finger on and play those three strings together again. Okay, so that rhythm of one, two, a one, Sounds a bit complicated, but probably just play it by ear because you know this piece, you know how it sounds. And you probably don't even need to count that or think about that counting, just play it how it sounds. Okay, um, I think that'll keep us right, that's probably the best way to do it, just playing it more by ear, really. Okay, so that first beat of measure four was that F chord, and then nice easy measure, we just play that again on beat two, and that's that measure done. Okay, so measures three and four. That's all we need to do. So then into measure five, we've got this little kind of cheeky thing going on. Um, we're essentially just playing those three strings again off that F chord. But what we're gonna do, just to add a little kind of like frill here, is as we play it, very, very quickly hammer on to the A string at the first with the second finger, but then pull it straight off again. Okay, so as we pick that beat one, just a really quick hammer on pull off with the second finger. Okay, see what I'm doing there. So if we play measures three and four, and then that first beat of measure five.
Okay, so again, don't overthink the rhythm of that. Just think of playing that F chord on beat one, but adding that little frill as you do it. Okay, really quickly, not too slow, it shouldn't be. It's not like that, it's really quick. Okay, so if we carry on with measure five, the rhythm we've got here is one, a two, a. So again, we're kind of just playing the two beats, but then these little 16th notes just at the end of each beat. Uh, but again, kind of play it by feel. Once you can play these four measures together, you haven't really got to think about the rhythm because you just know it. Again, it's just that iconic kind of melody of this piece of music. So play it by feel, really. So beat one was that. Let it ring for most of beat one. And then the last 16th note, the A of beat one, we're just going to pick the E string at the third. So put the third finger on to play that. Then on beat two, straight after, take that third finger back off and play that F chord again. Just the three strings together, just like the intro. And then again, let that ring for most of B2, then that A, ah, that last 16th note, just put that second finger where it was before on the A string of the first, and just pick that single note. Okay, so just that measure, measure five. Let's try that again. Okay, and then into measure six, just the same as measure four, that F chord twice on the beat. Okay, one, two, just like that. So those four measures again, quite slowly. Okay, smash it. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One, two, Onto the next four measures now, measure seven, eight, nine, and ten. They should sound like this. Okay, so what are we doing there? So we're moving now from this F chord to the C7. So all we're going to do, we've been having that index finger on there at the E string at the first, like the entire time so far. All we're going to do now is just move that over to the A string at the first to hold this C7. Again, we're just picking those three strings together, the A, the E, and the C, and that's beat one. And this is rhythmically the same as measure three, this one, two, A, uh, okay? So beat one is that C7, and then we're gonna put the third finger onto the E string at the third, and play that with the open C, so a double stop there, pick those on beat two, okay? and then let that ring for most of B2, the last 16th note, the A ah, at the end of B2, we're just gonna play the A string at the third, using the pinky to play that. Okay. Just like that. And as we do that, you could probably take these two fingers off. So as we play that A string at the third with the pinky, the rest of those fingers can come off and then straight into measure eight on beat one, we're back to that F chord again, just like the intro, three strings together, um, just like we've been doing, okay. So that measure into beat one of measure eight. And then measure eight is the same as measure four and measure six, just that F chord twice on the beat, on beat one and on beat two. Just as simple as that. Okay, so the two measures there together, That's all we're doing. And then onto the next two measures, we're gonna change this now to this D minor chord. So keep that first finger on. Now add the second finger to the C string at the second fret, and just play that double stop of the E and the C string on beat one. And then on beat two, just pick that C string at the second single note pick. And then on the A at the end of beat two, again, just that last 16th note, we're gonna add the third finger on to play the E string at the third, but keep the other two fingers on. And then as you pick that note, take those fingers off. Okay, so. Ready to play that open C for beat one of measure 10. So that measure nine into that beat one of measure 10. And then actually measure 10 is dead easy because then we let that ring for a beat, that open C, and then on beat two, all we're gonna do 
is play the A string at the third with the pinky. And that's it for measure 10. So measures 9 and 10. Okay. So if we put those together with measures 7 and 8, we have... Perfect. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One. Two. On to the next four measures, measures 11 through to 14, we would have... Okay, so here now we're changing to this G minor chord now. Um, so from this position here where we were at the end of measure 10, we're just going to keep that third finger on, pinky can come off, and then the second finger is going to take this C string at the second, and we'll play those two strings together, E at the third, C at the second, that double stop there on beat one and then let that ring for a beat and then on beat two pick it again and then into measure 12 now slight change in the rhythm we're just playing all eighth notes here so we're playing one and two and okay so beat one is just that g minor again that double stop and then we're going to do on the and after beat one is add the pinky up to the a string at the fifth but whilst keeping these on let them ring and then on beat two, keeping those on, pinky just comes down to the third fret on that A string, and then play those three strings together, the A, the E, and the C. And then the and after beat two, just dropping that A string down to the first fret, so pinky comes off, first finger goes onto the A at the first, and just a single note pick on the and after beat two. So there's two measures there, So then if we take that into measure 13, we then change this to a D minor chord. We haven't got a lot to do. The second finger can stay on. The first finger will just jump over to the E string at the first, and the third finger will come off. So we're now holding that double stop. We pick those two notes with the open A, actually, so a chord here. Yeah, so we're playing the A, the E, and the C off that D minor chord on beat one. And again, we're doing the same rhythm as the previous measure here, one and two and, so all eighth notes here. So what we have is the D minor on beat one. Then we have the single note pick of E string at the third on the and after beat one. So we'll add the third finger on to the E string at the third and just pick that note. Then after we've played it, we'll just take it back off because I'm on beat two, same as beat one. We're playing that D minor chord again. Okay, then the and after beat two, we want to hit this A string at the first. Due to the position we're in here with our fingers of the left hand, it's easy. It's just to kind of drop that first finger into a sort of half bar. So it's still playing that E string at the first, but then it flattens down. So it plays the A string at the first as well. And we just hit that note, single note pick, A string at the first on the and after beat two. So just that measure 13. Okay, so that little flattening bar there to get that A string at the first. Brill. And then into the final measure of this little section, measure 14, we just go back to that D minor. So lift that bar off, just so it's playing only the, a, the E string at the first. Open that A string back up and just play that D minor chord. Three strings together, like we've been doing all the way through on beat one and then again on beat two. There we go. So measures 11 through to 14 again, quite slowly, would sound like this. Okay, smashing. So let's try playing those four measures through together now. One, two, On to measures 15 through to 18 now, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure 15 is dead easy, rhythmically and 
in terms of playing because it's open strings we're just playing on beat one and beat two beat one is just the open e and open c together so pick those two notes on beat one then on beat two same again but now add the a string open as well so three open strings together on beat two then into measure 16 and um, we're going to go to this e7 suspended four so just add the second finger onto the c string at the second fret and play those three strings again Okay, and then on beat two, we're going to go to this E shape by barring the fourth fret all the way across, but we're just going to pick the E and the C at the fourth fret there on beat two, and then the A at the end of beat two there, we're going to hit the E string at the seventh, which is a bit of a stretch with the third finger, but the reason we're using the third there is because we want to keep these two free, because very, very quickly now, straight into the next measure, um, basically like a sixteenth note later, we want to be in this position here. So it makes sense to use the third finger so these two can jump into position on the next beat, okay? So those two measures together before we look at the next one are... Okay, so then straight after that, like I just mentioned, keeping the bar on, we then want to put the second finger on the C string, sorry, the E string at the fifth, and then the pinky takes this A string at the seventh, and the C string at the fourth, we're holding there already with our bar. So again, three strings together, the A, the E, and the C, play in that shape there. Make sure you pick out the A string at the seventh, because that's our melody note that we want to hear. Okay, so that's beat one of measure 17, and then beat two of measure 17, we just hit that double stop of E string fifth, C string fourth. Let that ring for a beat and then into measure 18 dead easy we're just playing that same double stop on beat one and then again on beat two just play it twice more okay so those two measures 17 and 18 are just nice and straightforward there okay in terms of playing with the right hand not too straightforward with the bar that is a little bit of a pain um but we're not holding it for too long, so it shouldn't be too bad with that. Okay, so measures 15 through to 18, once again, quite slowly. Perfect. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One, two, Into measures 19 through to 22 now, things are getting a little bit naughty. We've got these 16th note triplet hammer-on pull-off things, which are a little bit tricky for the left hand, um, but I'll show you how to do them. We'll go quite slow. Um, they are a bit tricky, but we should be okay with them with a bit of practice. Okay, so if I play these four measures, 19 through to 22, they should sound like this. So as you can see, a little bit cheeky. Um, so what we're gonna do is for measure 19, we're on this G minor chord. So we're playing a different version to what we were down here. We're gonna play this E string at the sixth and C string at the seventh, um, which isn't too much of a jump because if we think where we were at the end of the previous measure, we were on this chord here, this A5 chord. Okay, so into this measure 19, we're gonna take the bar off and the pinky off, but the second finger we'll just leave on and just move it up a fret to the sixth, then the third finger takes that C string at the seventh. So we'll pick that double stop on beat one. Okay, and then we have within beat one, we have this now, this kind of 16th note triplet, where we play the fifth, hammered up to the seventh, and then straight away pull back off to the fifth. Okay, so once we've played that double stop on beat one, play it quite quick, kind of staccato, so play it, but then take the pressure off these fingers. So it cuts that note, uh, but also take the fingers off because it's easy then to do this little hammer on pull off if the rest of the fingers aren't doing anything. So we're just concentrating on that hammer on pull off. So that's what we're going for there. So a good strong hammer, you know, sort of put that first finger on the fifth and then, you know, with the third finger, Quite a bit of force onto that seventh fret and then 
pull it off down off the fretboard to get that pull off sound. So hammer it on and then pull it downwards to get that. And if you're not too good at hammer ons and pull off, maybe practice just that for a while to get those three strong sounding notes like that. Okay, and then into beat two, we just drop that first finger down to the fourth fret on the A string, pick that single note, and then the next note is an eighth note, so well, that's an eighth note, and so is the next one. The next one is the A string at the fifth, so we just use the second finger to go back up to that A string at the fifth. So the last two notes are just and they're both eighth notes at the end of that measure. So rhythmically, again, tricky to count this with this 16th note triplet. I would again, just kind of listen to this over and over again and just play these measures with these triplets, probably again by feel and kind of by ear, okay? That's what we wanna go for. Brill. So then if we go into measure 20, we're keeping this G minor sound, but we're going back to this first position G minor. So again, it's a bit of a jump there. Because we need to be straight into that G minor chord. So there's a bit of a jump to get to that. So a bit of practice just to get that jump nice and clean, nice and accurate. So it's C string at the second with the second finger, and then E string at the third with the third finger. And we're playing that on beat one. And we're letting that ring for an eighth note. And then on the and after beat one, we're hitting the open A. Okay. And then on beat two, we're gonna to go to the A string at the first. And single note pick on that, and let that ring for the rest of beat two. So just that measure 20. That's just one and two. One and two. Okay. So with the previous measure, measure 19, quite slowly. speed, not that, okay, so then into measure 21 and 22, we're now going to play the open C on beat 1, so everything can come off, maybe leave that first finger on so it can just ring, yeah, so take these two fingers off as we go into measure 21. Hit that open C on beat one. Okay, and then we've got another one of these little 16th note triplets of so the same rhythm as measure 19. We're then gonna take that first finger off so we can play the open A. But this time we're gonna hammer on to the first fret where it just was, and then pull it back off. Okay, so open one open with the first finger. So with that open C, that's what we're going for on beat one. Then beat two is this E string at the first. And then we go up to the A string at the fifth with the fourth finger there. Bit of a stretch, but not too bad. We should be okay with that. Okay, so that measure again. And again, rhythmically quite difficult to count. Play it by feel, play it by ear. Okay, then if we take that into the last measure of this section, 22, we're going to drop that down to the third fret on the A string. So keep the first finger on, pinky comes off as the third finger takes that A string at the third. Pick that note on beat one, and then we have the same rhythm as the previous measure. We've got this next little eighth or 16th note triplet, which is kind of an echo of the previous measure, but an octave lower. So if we listen to measure 21. Measure 22 is then, same thing again, but just an octave lower. So the way we're doing that is a little bit tricky. There's a few ways to do it. This is a bit unconventional, but I found it works best for me. So I'll show you this, but then try and show you another alternative way if this doesn't quite work for you. So beat one of measure 22, we're holding this A string at the third. But now what we want to do is the G string, first time we're using this G string now, this bass note, we'll want to hit the A string, or the A note, G string at the second, and then take it up a fret to the third fret, and then back down to the second. 
And I find using a slide up and down works best here. Okay, rather than doing a hammer on pull off where other fingers have to get involved. I couldn't find an easy way to do it with the third finger taking that note there. If we do a hammer on pull off, the next note we want is the E string first. And then that was difficult to jump those fingers backwards to that fret if they were dealing with this hammer on pull off here. So, you could, I suppose, use the third finger. So pick that beat one A string at the third, and then use the second finger to play the G string second, and then hammer up with the third finger pull back off to the second and then play the E string first on beat two and then this C string second on the end after beat two. Okay, so. So just that measure 22. That kind of works with the hammer on pull off. What I do though is third finger stays on that A string second finger just does that little cheeky slide up and back down and then that takes care of that little triplet there um, quite tidily and then that first finger is free to play that um, e string at the first and then i'll drop that down with one of the little hingy half bar things to play the c string at the second so it is a bit unconventional and a bit awkward looking. It works for me, but I'm an unconventional, awkward kind of person. So, you know, that might not work for you. Have a little play around with it. Yeah, there's different ways of doing it, whatever works best for you. You might even find a, an alternative way different to what I'm showing you. Um, have a play around, see if you can use one of those or your own methods just to get that sounding good. That measure. So measures 19 through to 22, once again, we would have quite slowly. And that last note, the open C, was actually the next measure, measure 23, the first note there. Okay, so let's try playing those measures 19 through to 22 through together now. One, two, Next four measures, the last four measures of this A melody section should sound like this. Okay, and that takes us into a repeat of that A melody section again. So we go back to measure three and just play that section through once more. Okay, so this final four measures, if we're looking at measure 23, we want to play this open C. So wh whichever way we're doing that, um, little triplet thing at the end of measure 22, we pretty much just want to take everything off really and just play that open C. Okay, so wherever your fingers are, it doesn't matter, whip them all off, measure 23, just open C, single note pick on beat one. Then we've got one more of these little naughty triplets to do and then we're done with those triplets for now. Um, so what we're gonna do is this time we're gonna have the E string first with the first finger, hammer up to the E string third, and then pull off back to that first fret. Okay, so hammer on, pull off. There we go, so C string open. Hammer on, pull off on the E string. Then back to on beat two, that C string open again. And then the and after beat two, we're gonna hit the A string first. So just that measure. And then into measure 24, we're just playing on beats one and two. Beat one is the open A, so take that finger off, play the open A, single note pick, and then beat two to the E string third, with the third finger, again, just single note pick. So there's two measures together. Okay. And then in 
to measure 25, we have this F chord, which is slightly different to the F chords we've been playing. We need to hold a full proper F chord now, because rather than the A, E, and C, we're gonna play the E, C, and G strings together. And I tend to use my thumb for the G string and the two fingers for the E and the C. But you can do whatever you want with your fingers on the right hand, whatever works for you. But either way, we're picking those three strings together on beat one. Now I tend to play that chord quite quick, kind of staccato, a little bit like the intro where we use these fingers or the picking fingers to mute those notes after we've picked them. I think that sounds quite good to do that staccato sound. And then we have this run of eighth notes which kind of ascend up the F major scale just to take us into our repeat of that A melody section through once more. So the and after beat one is this open C. Then on beat two, we hammer up to the second fret on the C string. And then the and after beat two is this open E. Okay, so that measure 25. And then into measure 26, we just carry on at that scale. E string at the first on beat one. And after beat one, third fret on the E string, all single note picks. Third finger there takes that. Then on beat two, open A. And then the A string at the first on the and after beat two. Just working up that scale. So there's two measures there, 25 and 26. And that'll take us then into our repeat of the A melody section. Okay, where we play that once more. So just those four measures again then, let's have a look at them all together before we play them through. Measures 23 to 26, we would have... So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One, two, So just before we wrap up this part one lesson, I just want to mention a quick performance note about how we could play this first section. So this A melody section, obviously we play, play through twice. It's exactly the same. There's no variation in it at all in terms of what we play. So just to add that sense of variation, I think it sounds quite good if the first time we play it through, play it quite softly, quite gentle, a little bit quieter. Um, and then the second run through, sort of as we do the end of the A section, that kind of ascending scale there back into the repeat of that section. If you kind of use those two measures to kind of increase the volume as you come up that scale, get a bit of a crescendo going, and the second time through we play this A section, just play it a bit louder, a bit bolder, get a bit more volume on there, just to add a bit of variation between those two run-throughs. Okay, so that is it for the part one lesson. I hope you'll join me over in the part two lesson where things are gonna get a bit spicy. All right, guys, so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun. It's the second tune we've done from the opera, Carmen. And I gotta say, both songs have incredible melodies that are ultra catchy. As soon as you hear it, you can't help but wanna sing along or hum along. Now, I do wanna give you a friendly reminder that if you want to watch the part two lesson, so to learn the rest of the tune, plus get the tabs to print, keep for your records, that was available at this link right here. Or you can go to the site, rockclass101.com, do a search for the ARIA. And also on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab here. So you can literally hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed, just makes learning this song so, so much easier. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed learning the first part of this tune. We'll catch you in the part two lesson. And until then, take care and have a good rest of your day.